everybody, Canadian Motor Gal here, and welcome to just a little bit of a gear show and tell for my warm and safe heated jacket liner. It's the 65 watt version that I have here, and I've been actually using this one for about a year now. I purchased it directly from Warm and Safe in the States, and I did get it from the outlet site, so I believe this one is the Generation 4 liner for ladies. And even with the shipping and even with the exchange for our dollar and everything, it was still a fabulous deal and um, super happy with it overall. Most of my riding, I do uh, not ride if it's colder than four degrees Celsius, but I have used this in four degrees Celsius weather with my uh, either my Revit Sand ladies jacket or previously I also have just worn like a leather jacket over it and then even just like um a north face wind kind of breaking jacket over top of that so three layers but it's been warm enough but just with the lady sand the revit jacket and this underneath it is definitely warm enough for me at four degrees celsius or above part of the reason that i went with the 65 watt jacket was essentially because my ride is a 2012 honda cbr 250 and i was kind of looking at getting some heated gloves as well or possibly some heated grips and i really wasn't sure if uh, my bike could handle a 90 watt jacket plus some heated grips or gloves so i just decided to go ahead and get the 65 watt one based on the calculations i did i figured that that would afford me enough juice to be able to get some heated grips or gloves or both on top of being able to use my jacket as well so i haven't tried the gloves or the grips yet i'm only doing um pretty much the heated liner at this point and my bike handles it beautifully i've not had any issues at all with the battery um, so yeah overall it's been really good most of my driving is on the highway or secondary highways so i tend to keep my revs above um, four or five thousand rpms which is what most of what i've read online is what you kind of would need to be able to uh, maintain from draining your battery if you're operating the gear on the highest setting which i do actually operate on the highest setting most of the time one of my subscribers had actually asked if I had a video or anything about my heated liner. Uh, so, and I didn't really, I'd planned on doing one, but I'm like, you know what, I'll do one now because we got snow yesterday and it stayed on the ground. It's only two degrees Celsius out right now. So we've actually spent the day uh, stocking up our wood pile. As you can see, this is our, our new to us home that we are getting and reno renovating, but we do have a brand new wood stove and it's a perfect day for the wood stove to be going and probably a perfect day to be talking about a heated liner as well then. So I ordered based on the sizing chart that was provided by Warm and Safe and the sizing was completely spot on. Uh, this fits me really well. I probably actually could have even gotten the size lower if I wanted it to be a little bit of a tighter fit. But overall, I can actually um, wear like a sweater underneath this if I wanted to and it fits comfortably. So uh, if you want it really, really much tighter and you only want to wear a base layer, then uh, for sure the sizing chart should fit just fine for you. You can see here, this is the inside of the jacket. I've been wearing it for about a year and I wear it quite a bit and it still looks pretty much like brand new inside. All the seams and everything are still in really excellent condition. So just a bit of a walkthrough from the inside of the jacket. You can see here, it's just got a little tab. You can hang it up if you want that way. Um, you can actually feel some of the heated wires through here, but once you have it on, it's actually pretty comfortable. There's a few spots where the wires seem to bunch up a tiny bit, and that's mostly in the back shoulders, but that's if I'm wearing something on top of this, plus another jacket so that's kind of tight and crunchy. But then I can kind of just reposition the wires a little bit when I put it on, and then I don't feel them, and it's not uncomfortable in that way just a couple of other little things. You can see here, it's got a little zipper on the inside pocket and that's where some of the extra wires get stuffed in to be able to put kind of like the battery pack that is like the remote battery so that you can have a controller, a heat troller attached either you can keep it in your pocket or you can attach it on your bike. Mine's attached on the bike and I'll show that to you in a little bit. But uh, so it's got like a, a wireless kind of like um, transmitter so to speak so you can control the temperature that way and then you just like plug your jacket right into your, into your bike and I'll show you that setup as well. So next up to look at here is you can see it's a nice liner inside when you uh, look at the outside of the jacket it's got some piping on it that on the back here is reflective but um, obviously this is not an armored uh, jacket so you wouldn't want to wear just this when you're riding your bike. Now um, it does taper in nicely for a lady's fit. 
It definitely fits shorter at the bottom here, but that's a good thing because if you have a jacket to pant two-piece suit with the zip, this is not gonna get in the way of the zips. It also does have two pockets and they're pretty roomy little pockets. So you can actually get some stuff in there if you wanted to. And again, this pocket too has just some of the wiring for, like I said, the wiring pops in on the inside and the outside. And you actually just fit kind of like the battery pack right inside the pocket here. And this battery pack can actually be washed if you want to wash your liner. I've not had to wash the liner yet, so I haven't tried that, but um, that's what they say you can do if you want to, or you can take it out. Uh, uh, zipper, really nice quality zipper. As you can see, it's a nice thick zipper. It zips up really, really nicely. And again, the seams are in super excellent condition. Collar, nice and high collar, really nice and high. And it's also got wiring in it. So the collar is actually heated as well, which is really nice on those cooled rides. The other thing is it's got stretch panels. So along the side and along the upper back shoulder area where it kind of runs up in here. So that's really, really nice because it, again, it can fit nice and, and snug to you, which you definitely want that heat to be nice and snug to your body. So the stretch panels do help with that. And the stretch panels also help uh, based on your riding position. If you're bringing your arms forward more, not a problem. I don't find that it crimps anywhere up on me at all. On the arms, nice little zips you can see right here. So inside those little zips right at the bottom of the sleeves is actually the wire. So if you wanted to get warm and safe heated gloves, you plug these right into the gloves. And so then it just connects as one big unit. So you don't have to have a separate plug-in for your gloves, which is really cool. You can just plug your gloves right into this. Now, like I said, I haven't gotten the gloves yet, but it's on my wish list of things to get. So this is the plug-in that you have to plug into when you get on your bike. And there's actually like a setup that goes onto your battery with a cord coming out that you plug this into that. And then, like I said, I do have the remote heat troller controller just Velcroed onto my bike with the Velcros that came with it. Let's go have a look at what that looks like on my bike. Honestly, I love this jacket. It's probably one of my favorite pieces of equipment. All right, and so here we are to continue on having a look at how my heated liner is set up on my Honda CBR. So as you can see right here, this is just the connector where the liner just plugs right into this. And this actually I've threaded underneath my seat. So it was, it's pretty long, but I threaded it underneath and within between my seat and the fairing right here. Really, really simple to install. I'm not going to take this off to show you because I have to take off my back seat and then I also need to grab my Allen wrench to screw off this seat to access my battery. But it's super simple. This just has like a Y connector for the positive and the negative terminal on the battery. So you just have to screw those two things off on the battery, connect it up, screw it on, and then just thread this pretty much in between your seat, your fairing, or however you want to install it. Some people have it further up. Some people actually drill into somewhere on their fairing and have a port. I just had it like this and it works really good on my bike. Then next piece is the actual kind of like little, you can see there's like a heat troller here. So I'm ripping it off because I have it Velcroed on. And then this just needs to actually be synced with the battery pack with like the pack that stays in the jacket liner. And it's really, really, really easy to sync it up. But uh, different ways you can mount this, you can mount this off, you can like Velcro it on somewhere else on your bike. I just found on my CBR, this was the easiest spot for it. Just because there's not a lot of room on my handlebars to mount it any other real way. I've seen some people um, also just carry this in their pocket. I prefer to just keep it on my bike. It's totally uh, waterproof. So this has been on my bike, like I said, for about a year with the Velcro and it's never come off, so it's not a problem. Super easy to operate when you're riding. You just have to like control it with the controller right here. If you want it hotter, then you just have to crank it all the way up. And then if you want to turn it down, you just crank it to the left, then you can turn it off. If you leave it on, and you unplug yourself, then it's not going to drain your battery uh, because obviously you won't be hooked up to your battery on your liner. So it just kind of pretty much cancels itself. So I keep my revs between four and 5,000. So if I'm in town, obviously it's not as cool because the highway speeds aren't, aren't chilling you quite as much. 
So if that's the case and you just want to turn it down so that it's not draining your battery too much. If anybody has any questions about the heated liner for Warm and Safe, uh, shoot me a message. Otherwise, um, Warm and Safe has a really, really good customer service department. So you can also shoot them a message and they have lots of really good install videos and product explanation videos as well. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. You gotta have that time where you just like disconnect from the, from the scene, just the, the, the race. Like, and it's a race that I've created in my head, you know? But you have to step away from it.